For those of you who have never seen Mr. Robot, I highly suggest you do. That is a great television series. It's gone now, but you can still see it free uh, on Amazon Prime. Definitely recommend you do. One of the greatest scenes, one of my favorite scenes, was in season one when he decided that he needed to hack that uh, storage facility so that he could destroy all of Evil Corp's data. And what he did was he snuck into the bathroom. He found that there was in their bathroom a, uh, well, just a closet door that happened to have access to their network. There was an ethernet connection right there. And he basically took a Raspberry Pi and connected in and utilizing that, well, watch the show. It's awesome. It's awesome. But anyway, love that. And that's why I would love to use a Raspberry Pi to do VPN work like this to try to basically, for our purposes, when it comes to a house or an apartment complex that doesn't allow you to open up a uh port forwarding option to make sure that 44158 is open so your uh, helium hotspot is not relayed you could use uh, a vpn to basically do this instead now unfortunately i decided to go the route of the mango which is not a bad idea still recommend the mango awesome tool but the vpn option didn't work out i needed to find a better option than this and my facebook group that I've created to uh, help enhance uh, this channel. Uh, some great contributing member there suggested, hey, let's use a VPS. We're gonna basically uh, set up a virtual machine somewhere with a static IP address, and we're going to use that to port forward out uh, 44158. So I am gonna show you the process. He has all the documentation on our Facebook group. If you want that documentation, please join our Facebook group. It's in the description. And uh, well, let's just take it from there. I'm gonna walk you through the entire process. So to begin, we are going to be using server point in order to set up this virtual private server. Okay, they have some pretty good deals specifically here, as you can see, Cloud VPS hosting, $5. So click on learn more, just like I did. And from here, you are gonna to wanna to set up an account. Now I've already set up my account and I've actually even added funds for my account. You can add funds right there using that button. But as you can see, I've already added 10 bucks to go. So all I need to do is click on deploy a new VM. Now you're gonna choose the $5 option. That's the first thing you're gonna do then you're gonna to need to choose a location closest to you. Because I'm in Denver, I've chosen Las Vegas. And third, you're going to need to choose Ubuntu 20 as the operating system. Now everything else after that, don't worry about it. Step four, step five, none of that matters. We're not gonna do any of that stuff. It's step six that's gonna matter. You're going to need to create your password here. You can also change the name of the virtual server, but for this situation, we're only gonna use one IP address. I don't even know how you would go about creating other configurations for multiple IP addresses, so don't even worry about it. Now, because I've already put money in this, no payments needed at this moment, but you do have to set up how payment's gonna be in the future. So you could go with PayPal, or you can go with a credit card, it's up to you. Whatever you choose, once you've done that, you can then go to the lower right and place order. Okay, once you place the order, the VM virtual machine will be created and you can click on manage your virtual machine to see what your virtual machine has set up. More specifically, what the IP address is going to be. Now, to be honest, I don't want to show you my IP address, so I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, what I am going to do is go right to the documentation because this is where you start entering the documentation information. So I'm going to take that IP address and I am going to SSH into the virtual machine. Now you can use PuTTY just like it's stated in the documentation, but because I am on a Mac, I'm just gonna use my terminal to SSH in. And then from here, we can just start copying and pasting uh, the information starting at number eight. So just like it says, and during this process, we're gonna first do the sudo app-get update. After we're done with that, we're gonna go do the sudo app-get upgrade. In the upgrade process, you actually are going to be asked whether you want to make these changes to use this amount of disk space. You're going to want to say why for yes. And then it might take a while for this to happen. But once it's finished, we're going to then use the sudo app install 
wire guard and once again when you go through that process it's going to once again ask you to uh, say yes for the installation so these are the three main things you're going to need to do to get some installations uh, onto your server and once these are finished we are then going to start generating keys now the two keys that we need to generate are the private key and the hotspot public key but in order to move this information over, uh, you're gonna, it's two lines. So you're gonna need to copy one line, then add a space, then copy the second line, then have it run. And then for E, once again, you are going to copy the line, paste it in, add a space, and then copy the next line. Now, once you have both of these in, we're going to need to record what all of the private keys, public keys, hotspot private key, hotspot public keys are. This can be a little tricky. What's worked best for me is to actually just manually type in cat space dash and then etc slash wire guard slash and then for the first one privacy key. After you're done with that you'll do the next one which you would repeat the process delete private key add public key then for the next one once again delete a uh, public key at hotspot dash private key. Now I'm just using the up arrow to uh, re-put in the cat space dash uh, et cetera uh, dash wire guard. You, you get it. Um, by using the up arrow key, it just uh, repeats the code. And then once you have it all, you can just copy and paste all four values into like your text editor or somewhere. That's a great way to get started. Now, once you've done all of this, we're going to do step J, which is a big important step. It's where you actually go in and you're gonna paste in for this configuration file you're making a lot of code. Now, this code doesn't get pasted in very well, I'll be honest. And again, you have to add some values in. You'll notice it'll ask for value one and value four. So when you copy and paste it over, it may not add the breaks. In other words, it may not go to the next line as it needs to. Uh, so you're going to have to add these in manually. So first you want to go and uh, just use the uh, arrows to locate where the value one goes, delete that value one, and paste in the actual one which you've stored in your text editor. Then as you can see, I had to put address on the next line. Um, some of these post ups and again I am not a programmer I don't even know what most of this means but I wanted to make sure that I had these in there are five post ups so I actually had to go through and verify when that post up occurred and hit enter to put it into the next line then just keep moving forward till I saw them all and made sure that I had again the five total now once I had the five total I then needed to repeat this process for post down. So again, there are five post downs. I go through the process, locate all five post downs, and make sure that they are each on consecutive lines. Once that's finished, I of course still need to add in the public key or value number four. So I need to copy that information from the text editor and paste it over. This is a long process, but uh, once you're finished, uh, you'll be happy because this this is the important step. This is where you want to make sure that all the lines are correct and that there are no issues. And honestly, if there is a problem, the problem usually occurs here. Usually there is a space at the end of something or maybe you forgot the beginning of one of the values, something to that extent. So once you're finished with all of that, you can then hit control O and enter to save, and then you'll do uh, a uh, control X to, well, quit after it's been saved. Now, once you've done that, there is a, another file. And for this file, all we're going to do is locate the line of code, make sure it's not commented out by removing the pound sign. Once that's done, again, it's a control O and then enter to save and then a control X to get out of it. With all of that done, we have one more thing to basically enable what we're doing. So we're going to use that code to enable what we're doing and then we're going to reboot the server. 
once the server is rebooted, it does take uh, like 30 seconds before it's up and running again. And once it's up and running again, we can then use WG. Well, we're going to need to log in first, of course. So we're going to re-log back in. But once we're logged back in, we're going to enter WG to make sure everything is operational. If you get their expected response back, seeing something like the following, then you know that it's working and we're good to go. Now that that's all complete, we can access the Mango. In order to access the Mango, we need to actually go in and use the Wi-Fi of the Mango. So you'll have to switch over to use the Wi-Fi of the Mango and then use 192.168.8.1 in order to log in. Now, the Mango's uh, password is generally good life. Uh, that should be correct in both places. I've made changes, but that's me. Once you're in, I'm connected via uh, Ethernet cable. Not sure how you're connected, but we're just going to start uh, right actually at the end of the documentation and copy in the values we need. Okay, so under VPN, we're going to go to WireGuard Client, and here we're going to set up WireGuard manually using manual input. For manual input, we are going to need value 3 and value 2, which we put in the text editor. So make sure you have the text editor handy. In other words, let's make sure that we can move this over to the left side and then copy and paste it as needed. So we'll start by copying the IP address. And again, this is directly from the documentation, 10.0.1.2 slash 32. Then the private key, that's value three. So go over, copy value three from the text editor and paste it in. Make sure you don't have any space at the end. Uh, then we're gonna add the listening port, 51820. Once we're done with that, we can leave the DNS blank, but we do need to add the MTU, which is that default 1420. Then under peer, we're going to add value number two. So again, copy that over from the text editor. Make sure you don't leave anything missing. Uh, then go to endpoint host, and we're going to paste in our IP address. This is a fake one that I put in there right now. And uh, 51820, that's the colon 51820, put at the end. Allowed IPs is 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 slash zero. And uh, we don't have a pre-shared key. Actually, that we're, we're pretty much done at this point. That keep alive 25, we don't need to copy it. It's actually stored in by automatically. So once we're done, we're going to name this. I'm going to just name it SharePoint so I remember where I'm connecting to. You can name it whatever you want, though. And then we click Add. Once it's added, we can verify that the server is correct, that we have SharePoint listed there. Once we know that, we will connect. Once it's connected, we'll go from a yellow that tells us that it is trying to connect to a green. So we'll have that little green dot on the left side instead of the yellow. And you'll also uh, see information about upload, download, IP address, and we know it's working. Okay, now that it's working, we still need to make the IP address to our Helium hotspot static as well as uh, port forward. So this information here under clients is our Helium hotspot. We can then go under more settings to LAN IP. And here, now that we know under client what our MAC address is, we'll click the right one and well, add it. It's all we need to do in order to make sure that that is a static IP address uh, on the Mango. Then under Firewall, we'll name this Helium just to make it easy. We're going to set the protocol. We're going to leave it at TCP slash UDP, although it could just be TCP. We're going to change the external zone to use WireGuard. We're going to change the external port to be 44158. We'll leave the internal zone the way it is, but the internal IP we need to set to be the one for our Helium hotspot. And then the internal port will be again 44158. Once all that's done, let's add it. Okay, once it's been added and everything is successful, you are pretty much good to go. Now all we need to do is check this to make sure the port forwarding is correct. So at the very bottom of the documentation, you'll see you get signal.com. We're going to go to uh, you get signal and we're going to change the remote address to the correct IP address. 
and we can go back to server point. I'm sorry, I was calling it SharePoint, my bad. Server point, and uh, we'll just copy the address information here and paste it over for the remote address, uh, changing the port number to 44158, and uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, just change the port number 44158 and get the remote address and verify that indeed the port 44158 is open. All right, that's it. I hope this helps you get up and running with your Helium Hotspot Miner not being relayed. Please like and subscribe if you like more content like this and want me to make more videos that teach you things. And well, hey guys, happy mining.